So can you actually improve your riding by yourself? Like you're going to work with yourself, on yourself to improve your riding. I think you can. And I think that self-assessment is the key to all this. And today I'm going to give you a couple of exercises you can do the very next time you're in the saddle, maybe even today, that's going to help you to figure out where you need to focus next for you and your riding. Okay, let's begin. Hey there, and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach. And if you've been wondering to yourself, I don't know what to do today with my horse. Ooh, you need to listen in because I help riders go from that to actually having a plan each time they ride. Okay, so over the past few weeks, we have been diving into kind of your comeback to riding and whether you have been riding kind of consistently and steadily over the past few months, but now you really want to make this big leap in your riding or you are, you know, a little bit struggling to get back into the rhythm and the routine of things, okay? I created this series just to help riders to really and truly make that happen so as they can actually create this comeback for themselves and you know you always want the comeback to be better than the original okay you want it to be like more of everything just more special more magic and um, more skilled okay you want all of that and that is really and truly where I think as a rider you can begin from today focusing that you can actually begin improving your skills so that you and your horse are getting better results every single time you ride. Now, again, I am using the word ride, but as always, when I say ride, I mean any interaction you're having with your horse. So whether you're doing groundwork, whether you're lunging, whether you're doing long lining, whether you're riding, okay, it makes no difference. I'm talking really and truly about the interaction, the training, the intention to grow and to improve what is there right now to make it better, okay? That is what we want to work on with you and your horse. And I do know that for many, many riders, they initially struggle with knowing what to focus on. And especially if you've been either, as I said, doing the same thing for a while now, or you're just back in the saddle after a break, you're kind of like, I don't know, what what needs to be worked on? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of step-by-step things to follow and to work on today in the saddle to help you with that. And I'm going to be honest with you, self-assessment, it can feel a little bit overwhelming initially, but it is something that you can practice and improve on. So if today is your very first time doing this, that you're actually like going out with the intention of kind of assessing where yourself and your horse are at right now in your riding and your training, you know, you mightn't be great at it, but that's okay. Now you have like a baseline, you have a starting point that you can then work at improving all the time, okay? But I do think that the challenge is often knowing what to look for. And also, I think this is really important, being able to identify and if you want to categorize, um, maybe something that is a symptom of something else versus something that is actually a root cause of a problem, okay? I think sometimes riders, we can tend to get a little bit hung up on the symptoms, um, but we're kind of missing the big picture. And this is why I think when you're working through this, it's important to kind of follow maybe, you know, follow along here, okay? Like start where I'm telling you to start, because if you can get the basics down right, the rest of it all just comes, okay? So first and foremost, I'm going to suggest that you begin looking at your posture and your position because at the end of the day it all starts here if you are sitting correctly in the saddle the chances of everything else working as you want them to well that increases dramatically okay Um, and that like right down to the basic of just allowing the horse to move underneath you to being able to remain balanced through transitions from your how well your aids can work your overall communication and also then being able to help your horse to actually use himself a little bit better as well if you are quote unquote, sitting pretty, okay? If you're sitting well in the saddle, if you have a good basic position and you are carrying yourself, meaning your posture is good, okay? You are going to see huge differences in your riding. So start with the lines. This is really simple. Just head, shoulder, hip, heel. Are they in line? So many people are riding 
with their shoulders in front of their hips or maybe their shoulders are behind their hips a lot of people their lower leg okay so their heel is way too far forward it's not underneath them at all or similarly and especially if they're tending to grip with the knees we'll talk more about that just now their lower leg may be too far back so that you're not getting that head shoulder hip there's no heel in there, okay? So I think that if you can begin to think about that line and to really kind of just glance down and assess the line for yourself, that's important. Now, what I always tell people and I point out to them when we're in the arena together is that line, you want it down kind of the middle through the body. Sometimes we can tend to think that our hip is rather where like kind of the back of our bum is. No, it's not, okay? That's your bum your hip is different. Now, if you were to run a line like just straight down the middle, good place would be your ear. And then just if you're standing correctly or sitting correctly in the saddle, let it drop down through the shoulder, through the hip, down to the heel. Okay. That is a good basic line to work on. And then from there, the second line would be the elbow, wrist, thumb, rein and bit. Okay. So from your elbow, right down your arm, through the wrist, through the thumb, down the rein and to the bit or the horse's mouth. Okay. Those are two lines that if you are able to maintain them throughout the ride for the for the most part you're going to see a big difference it's going to position you correctly to communicate with your horse okay and then I mentioned posture as well you know we all want self-carriage from our horses but we also can be very guilty of not following through with that for ourselves okay so I think it's really important to model the self-carriage okay and thinking about am I creating space between my ribs and my hips which sounds like a really strange thing and you know you are you are made as you are made but it's just this feeling of space it's this feeling of carrying the body that you're not slouching down on top of your hips and shutting it down another way of thinking of this is are there a lot of creases down the front of my tummy if I if I glance down because very often when we slouch you get creases okay we don't want that we want it nice and just ready flat lovely okay we're looking for that now when you can carry yourself this way and then combine it with that position it's going to allow your seat to open up more easily and communicate with your horse okay now from here I would then think about how you are distributing your weight over your horse okay now you may say, well, sure, I'm sitting in the saddle. <laughs> there we go. That's how I'm distributing it. No, because once you get a little bit more into, you know, some of the, well, I suppose it doesn't have to be very fancy, but the fancier elements of horse riding, this becomes really, really important, okay? And very often horses who are not or won't or refusing to do something are doing so because the rider is not distributing their weight correctly, okay? And it's something to remember. Um, but yeah, I would say start like with this from the beginning. A good kind of a, a way of thinking about this is that there's an equal amount of you on the left-hand side as there is on the right-hand side, okay? So like the, you're, you're sitting in the middle um, a good exercise would be that in walk, obviously start in walk, feeling your seat bones, like really sitting in. And of course, if you're sitting pretty, if you've got a good position, okay, and you're carrying yourself, you've got that posture sorted out. And this is why I'm suggesting doing it the way I'm telling you to do it, okay? Like go down through the checklist, okay? But if you're sitting correct in the saddle, you will then be able to feel your seat bones. And then draw this like imaginary or create this imaginary line in your saddle. So from the middle of the cantle, which is the back of the saddle behind you, to the middle of the pommel, which is the front of the saddle in front of you. Okay, so you've got this line uh, that you've kind of, you know, it's, it's going halfway uh, on your saddle and you want to then try and make sure that your seat bones are remaining equal distances from that line all of the time because what tends to happen especially when we you know go into something other than walk so if you're going to trot and canter okay or when we go around a corner those darn corners okay whenever you go around a corner or a bend you will find that there may be a tendency for your seat bones to shift and usually what happens is this inside seat bone so the one closest to like the middle of the arena or the inside of the the the, the arena that will especially around corners and bends tend to migrate slightly 
okay, towards that line. But of course, what it does is it pushes your outside seat bone further out. And it, it causes an awful lot of problems for so many riders. Of course, the biggest the biggest problem that we see there is, especially in the canter, yeah, you your horse takes the corner and you don't, okay? But really, this is something you can practice and walk and you can begin to assess, okay, can I keep this? Can I maintain this and walk? Can I maintain this and trot? Now, this is not to say that, of course, your seat bones are, are moving, you're all the time moving, but you want want to be able to all the time come back to this central point where they are equal distance from the center of the saddle okay from that imaginary line that we've drawn from the cantle to the pommel of your saddle and you want to try and keep it there and um, I think that that's really 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 important and um, and I would then test myself. I would say, okay, like how long can I actually maintain this balance? And what you could do then, like another kind of the next level of this exercise would be, okay, so if I take my stirrups away and I do the same thing, how now would I assess how well I am sitting, like my position, my posture, and then how well I'm distributing my weight evenly across the saddle and over my horse, okay? So try it with the stirrups and then take the stirrups away. And I, again, would start and walk, go to trot. And then if you feel like you can, obviously, yes, of course, uh, include canter, but very often you'll notice a lot happening just in the walk and the trot themselves that need work. And now you've got this starting point. Now, what tends to happen for a lot of riders is that once they have this starting point, as I said, they're like, oh, they'll identify something. Oh, you know what I keep doing? My leg keeps doing this or, oh, you know, this one shoulder just does its own thing. Okay. Whatever it is, what they tend to do is they allow then just, they, they, it's almost like they get too caught up with making it right, okay? It must be right. And this creates excessive tension through the body and they end up gripping with the to the horse, okay? Now, I would say that if you're trying to hold your position or your posture, if you're like trying to fix it and hold it there, there's something wrong, okay? You don't, you shouldn't have to hold. Yes, you do need tension. You have to have a certain level of tension. If you don't have tension, yourself and your horse will fall down, okay? But it is important to understand that you have to have the correct level of tension for what it is you're doing. And that's really what we call relaxation if we're thinking about horses. But it's important that you understand that relaxation and suppleness are for both you and your horse okay it's not just the horse you are also like a key part of that okay if you're trying to grip or hold on in order to maintain this alignment or this position or whatever it is well things are not correct to begin with okay so I think that this is really really important where this might show up so I'm saying gripping and you'll often get people gripping with their knees gripping with their lower legs I have had a rider recently who, my word, she was gripping with her lower legs and the, the horse was like, kind of, whoa, okay, you want me to go? I can do that. Anyway, you can imagine how that all wound up. But yeah, so you don't want to grip, but also it can show up being like just very rigid. You know, you see riders and they, they're just like a statue on the horse. No, you must move with the horse. That's suppleness. You have to allow the energy to flow through, okay? You often see people holding on to the reins. And I mean like, this is like, you know, white knuckled, like holding on for dear life. Like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I might fall off. Okay. Um, and obviously they're not always thinking about falling off. Again, it can be trying to hold something together. You can't hold things together with horse riding because you always have to have the suppleness, which is the movement and the flow of the energy. Okay. So it is important to understand that. And then other riders they tend to brace through their body so they're like bracing themselves all the time again this is also excess of tension you need to figure that out so very often I also feel that for this particular challenge if it's showing up it's actually a mindset it's something that you're thinking to yourself and very often it's just you need to figure out hold on now why am I doing this what am I thinking is going to happen or what am I thinking doing this is going to achieve and then by actually, first of all, understanding and, and noticing what it is you're thinking and then kind of going, is that really true? Like, is that helping or is that not helping? Because it's probably not helping, hey? But yeah, once you can kind of understand that and then you can think something different or believe something different, um, ideally, 
that's where you can get this relaxation showing him without um, you having to actively keep working on it as well. Now, the final thing that I'm going to suggest working on for your self-assessment would be responsiveness. And with responsiveness, it's really important to understand that this is a trained behavior. And this usually means that if your horse is not as responsive as you would like, well, you or somebody else has probably trained him that way. And this can be intentional or not so much, okay? So um, it is important. And if you're thinking, why would anybody train a horse not to be responsive? Well, very often if you have beginners kind of hacking around a riding school, you don't want, you don't want the most responsive horses in the school with the beginners kind of knocking about, banging their legs and bumping their hands, doing all that sort of stuff and um, maybe gripping on all of that uh, certainly you don't want that so yes it can work both ways okay so what I would suggest doing here is that when you're thinking about assessing your responsiveness you need to first begin thinking to yourself okay so what is my role here and your role is to ask the question okay that's it that's your role ask the question and then it's your horse's role to respond to the question, okay? It's not your job to move the horse or to make the horse move, okay? Your job is to make sure that you're in the right place, that's your position, with the correct level of tension through your body, that's your posture and your relaxation, so that when you apply your aids correctly, your horse can respond to those aids. That's it, okay? Now, I do realize this is much easier said than done. (laughs) Okay, so what I suggest doing is begin to ask questions, but then pay really close attention to your horse's response. Um, So once you kind of figure out, oh no, like, no, I have to actually ask four times or I have to ask four times and just get like increasingly more and more with my asking before he'll ever even acknowledge that I asked a question okay but that's okay because once you figure that out now you have a baseline and what I would begin doing then is saying okay can I get him to do it from three times and how about twice and could we potentially get to a point where I just ask and he responds course you can by the way and this is something you can actually achieve in a single session working with your horse if you're diligent and you're consistent and you're making sure that all the other things I spoke about are in place okay you can definitely do this but what I would say is to understand that very often your self-assessment is going to show you that changes are needed for both yourself and your horse now this can feel like okay so I need to get my horse right no 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 Focus on yourself first. Get you right. Because at the end of the day, you can only control you. So it makes sense to spend time getting you right. And then from there, when you are more correct and you are more well positioned, when you are able to use your aids more effectively, then you can begin to work on your horse okay but up to that point there's a point where it's going to all be about you and then it shifts okay and that is so so important that is like a key element to riding and to actually making progress as a rider get the basics under more control okay understand how what you're doing is impacting the overall conversation and then you can begin to make those small small changes that are going to create this huge transformation for you and your horse the basics are essential Anybody will tell you that. Any of the people who are doing the fancy things, they'll say, "Mm, we do a little bit of the fancy things, but you know what we do all the time? The basics, (laughs) okay? Get the basics right. Your position, your posture, your basic aids, moving with your horse. And once you can do that, then you can begin to improve the whole ride. You can begin to improve you and your horse. Now, if you would like my help to help you to do this, and again, regardless of if you're currently riding quite regularly and you're just feeling like, no, we've hit this plateau, we're not moving forward, or if you are just coming back to riding after a long break or a short break, you know, I think a break's a break, eh? But um, I would love to help you. I'm looking for riders currently to work with. We're going to work together for nine weeks and we're basically going to just really get your aids and your basics rock solid so that you can actually make that transition from being a passenger in the saddle to being a confident rider. 
on your horse, okay? Somebody who you're a leader, you're there, you are now able to help your horse to begin to improve his work, okay? So we'll be doing this through one-to-one private coaching. There'll be the easy to follow audio lessons and also then the personalized weekly video reviews from me and we're going to be doing three live lessons together over the course of the nine weeks as well, okay? So it's just me and you and I know it's going to be done virtually, but yes, I will be virtually in the arena with you. I'm so excited for this. So if you're interested in finding out more, you can find out all the details over at returningtoriding.com. I am going to leave a link in the show notes for this. Um, and if you have any questions at all, you can reach out. Um, you can reach out Lorna at stridesforsuccess.com and I will get you there. Have a wonderful day. Keep well and I'll chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.